Spawn's origin explored in detail. As far as the superhero ranking of Spawn is concerned, the representation of his character has always been quite a matter of discussion. For starters, we know he isn't a member of the DC family, nor is he associated with Marvel, and this kind of leads him to fade away at times. You sent me to hell, Jason. I'm here to return the favor. But despite that, Spawn has managed to retain his position till date. After all, how many animated debuts end up being a recipient of two Emmys and two Golden Reel Awards? Well, Todd McFarlane, Spawn, also known as Spawn, the animated series, surely did. Also, speaking of Todd McFarlane, is it true that he did relish his superstar stature with his momentous work on Spider-Man? But let's not miss out on the fact that it was essentially his contribution in Spawn, which reaped him admiration and established his position amongst fans. Created back in the 90s, the character of Spawn began appearing in a monthly comic book, also called Spawn, published by Image Comics, and as faded, it quickly accumulated significant popularity, with his World and Rouge's gallery inevitably being the most interesting of all comic creations. Spawn has indeed come a long way. In today's video, we are going to explore about the origin of Al Simmons, otherwise known as Spawn, in detail. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Origin of Spawn Born to Esther Simmons and Bernard Simmons in Detroit, Albert Al Francis Simmons had an elder and a younger brother. A highly gifted officer of the United States Marine Corps, Simmons eventually reached the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Later, he joined the United States Secret Service, and post becoming a highly decorated member, got transferred to the Central Intelligence Agency. Once in the CIA, Simmons got further enlisted by Jason Wynn, the director of the organization, and two, an elite undercover ops division known as the U.S. Security Group, an exclusive task force that had authority in both domestic and foreign affairs. But with Wynn and Simmons bickering way more often, Simmons eventually got irritated and planned to resign. However, during an assignment in Botswana for the USSG's Operation Night Strike, the ill-fated Simmons met his death at the hands of his partner and friend, Bruce Stinson, aka Chapel. As per the orders of Wynn, Simmons, who has been an assassin his whole life, was unquestionably sent to hell. No points for guessing that, of course. What's interesting is the fact that he actually made a deal with the devil, Malibolgia, agreeing to become a hell spawn and serve him in exchange for being allowed to see his wife, Wanda, one last time. Okay, Cyan, let's get you off to daycare. Simmons returned back to the living world, but as a hell spawn, with minute recollections of his past, a severely burned body, restricted yet apparently limitless magical powers, and let's not forget his demonic guardian and arch nemesis, Violeter. Gradually, Simmons comprehended the fact that five whole years had passed since the time he died, and when he was finally able to track down his wife to meet her one last time, he found Wanda, married to his former best friend, Terry Fitzgerald. The duo even had a daughter called Sian. This drove Simmons to use the power of shape-shifting, and he opted to take the shape of Terry, and eventually made love to Wanda. Of course, she becomes pregnant, and that is precisely what sets in track the prophecy of the child, who will ultimately decide the destined reality. Bye-bye, Daddy. See you later, sweetness. <laughs> Simmons as Spawn has his share of adventures, and it goes without saying that initially, his activities show the anti-hero side of his nature. For starters, he takes down street gangs and organized crime that very much includes the cyborg, Overt Kill. Spawn is also notably remembered for taking care of the deranged, murderous pedophile, Billy Kincaid. One of his early adventures also comprises his encounter with Cerebus, the aardvark. His other memorable encounters include the ones with anti-Spawn, who unknown to Simmons is actually Jason Wynn and the Redeemer, who happens to be an ex-criminal, having found faith in religion while serving sentence. Spawn is also shown surviving an assault by Angela, the Hellspawn Slayer, 
one who claims the medieval spawn in the 16th century England as one of her trophies. While he keeps himself occupied with all these encounters, Spawn is also seen taking control of the lanes that cover Rat City. He even goes the extent of assisting the homeless there, eventually becoming their defender. Spawn's relationship with Cogliostro also deserve a definite mention. While initially appearing as an alley bum, he sure seems to know a lot about Spawn that even the latter knows about himself. In fact, both Cogliostro and Violator, the latter often taking the guise of a clown act as two opposite poles to Spawn, with the former trying to convince Spawn to utilize his powers for good and the latter for evil. During a crossover event with Batman, a particular incident led Batman into throwing a batarang into Spawn's face, something that literally had Spawn's face divided into two parts. And while we all know Spawn's ability to quickly heal wounds, which he could have easily done in this case, he chose not to do so. Instead, he picked an old shoelace and actually made use of it to seal the gap. The shoestring was later also worn as a necklace by Terry and Wanda's daughter, Sian. And amazed at the wonders of Necroplasm. Source of Spawn's existence comes from Necroplasm. Explored to those of you who simply have no idea about Necroplasm, well, it is a will-controlled, mystical substance, one that is of utmost importance in the fictional world of Spawn. Originally, it was identical to Psychoplasm, precisely what Hell is composed of. It bears a lot of similarities in terms of properties, but special in ways that it can exist on Earth without the need to remain in one of Hell's spheres of influence, and also being permitted to travel through the living world without breaching the non-aggression pact between Hell and Heaven. Spawn Zed. In fact, Necroplasm happens to be the creation of the Grand Ball Demon called Leviathan, and is quite exclusive to the eighth sphere of Hell. Then comes the character of Malibolgia, and who was also created by Leviathan. But Malibolgia eventually turned out to be way too powerful, and ultimately ended up killing his very creator and taking over the eighth sphere of Hell as the new ruler. This put Malibogia in a commanding position with the Necroplasmic Reserve, and also gave him the ability to generate a unique army of warriors known as Hellspawn. In fact, it was Malibogia who was responsible for creating Spawn and all the other Hellspawns with the solitary aim of gathering an army that was capable of destroying heaven. Coming back to Spawn, he himself dons a suit that is made out of necroplasm. The magical substance changes his physical appearance, even allows him to use his body as a living weapon. So that's the reason behind Spawn's superhuman strength, durability, speed, metabolism, healing factor, body density, and even weight. In fact, the suit is more like a living, synergetic being, one that literally gives him protection along with a plethora of powers. But this is not even the best part. Imagine him to have the power to be able to shoot necroplasm Necroplasm blasts from his body, and add to this the fact that his blood and eyes also glow with the same bright green light. Way too cool, right? But then comes the flaws too. Spawn soon learns that the Necroplasm offers a very restricted power supply. So when a Hell Spawn is created, he is given about 9,999 units, which slowly lessens with each use. Post the whole energy getting consumed, their time on Earth ends and the Hell Spawn returns back to Hell, and his soul is lost. But for Spawn, even with the limited supply, his real constraint is his imagination, especially when it comes to finding out ways to make use of his new powers to his full advantage. And with no intention of exhausting his energy supply soon, Spawn makes up his mind to depend on his suit's natural powers and also his knowledge regarding weapons. Spawn's suit is a sentient parasitic being known as K7 Lita. Wondering what's the source of the name K7 Lita? Well, this was in reference to the daughter of the seventh house of K, as disclosed in the first issue of Spawn, Blood Feud. It was in the midst of a dream that this entity declared its presence, and via a newly revived Al Simmons, it begins to kill everything around it. Spawn, upon being woken up by a few street bums in an alley, is informed about his suit behaving odd. For those who aren't aware, his suit appears to be the most advanced, very up to the minute in contrast to the other Hellspawn suits, and feeds off the necroplasm within his body. The fact that it is connected to his central nervous system, it actually feeds off whatever is left of Simmons' spinal fluid, 
and the neural chemicals in his brain. It's through this clairvoyant connection that K7 Letha is not only able to interact with Simmons's subconsciousness, but also enter his soul due to this neutral supernatural relationship. <laughs> what is this? No wonder. The suit is capable of foreseeing the requirements of its host on the basis of the nervous system's reflexive responses. Even the union that the suit makes with its host is not for a temporary basis, but made for life. It helps spawn, endure way more painful attacks. It even demonstrates its very own firearms during fights. For example, unbreakable chains, spikes, and claws that can even pretty much cut through everything. Also, each kill that Spawn makes, the soul is delivered straight to hell to restock the developing army of Balibogia. Over time, K7 Letha develops into a much advanced, more effective, tougher and deadlier parasitic life form. Even the cape of K7 Letha provides a miraculously empowered form of gliding to Simmons, something that lets Spawn effortlessly fly through air and move both fluidly and flexibly at a pretty much high speed. One of K7 Letha's most instant powers is its capability to alter its appearance on the basis of the wishes and willpower of its host. For example, is the original artwork. Todd McFarlane's original design of Spawn was much more sci-fi inspired. Spawn was no different than creators going through a plethora of ideas and versions before calling it their end product. Of course, this dearest soldier of hell has definitely evolved over the years, but at the same time also held on to many of his signature traits that most people in general can easily connect with the character. Well, starting from that cape of his to being still wrapped up with matters concerning heaven and hell or the fact that he still takes care of justice in a demonically dark world. All of this shows how his character has managed to retain those trademark elements. You will be surprised to know that there was a time when none of the mentioned elements were a part of his character. Todd McFarlane was in his teens when he started working on Spawn, and he was just 16 years old when he created the character. Well, initially, he had intended the character to be some kind of a sci-fi warrior. Even early designs of his sketches show Spawn wearing a blue, gray, and white suit, and by the looks of it, it seems like his character belonged in the outer space. In due course, McFarlane implemented the more diabolical red and black costume that Spawn is now famously known for. James Downing, the other Spawn explored. Hal Simmons happens to be the predecessor to James Downing, with whom the latter has some unknown connection. Downing wears Simmons's K7 Letha symbiotic suit. One night, Sarah Johnston is paid a visit by an angel, who happens to be the new incarnation of the Redeemer, and he prepares to kill her for associating with a Hell Spawn. But right before he does that, he sees a cross necklace and soon realizes that Sarah is a Christian. The following day, Mark Rosen meets Jim and acquaints him with a disabled Vietnam War veteran. Feeling a bit vexed, Jim leaves only to have Mark come back later at Sarah's apartment and show him that the veteran was healed. This is when he discloses that he had been following Jim's story all this while and has discovered the fact that whoever Jim has come in contact with has been cured of every sickness. Later that night, while Jim is having a tit a teat with a clown, Redeemer attacks them only to get killed in action. Jim is met by Mark again, who then reveals that it was his boss who forced him to run a story on him. Jim even discovers a swarm of reporters waiting outside outside his building, all wanting to run a story on him. While trying to get through the crowd of reporters, Jim chances upon Malcolm, disclosed to be patient 46. The duo gets into a fight at a construction site, and Malcolm reveals to him that if even he was a patient, that he cannot let the media see Jim morphed into Spawn. As for the media, they manage to record the entire event. Unable to get free from the reporters, Jim ends up flying away. Meanwhile, Sam Burke, Twitch Williams, along with a detective named Rowan, witness the event too. But Twitch, upon being distracted by Clown, chases him down the alleyway. Twitch is almost able to catch Clown, but the latter alters into Violator. As for Jim, post whatever happened, he packs up his belongings and leaves for the alleyways to keep it low and get away from the media. That's where he is met by the Freak, who tells him to choose between him and Clown. No wonder Jim transforms into Spawn. Meanwhile, Clown appears too, and he morphs into Violator before biting off the arms of the Freak, only to have the latter unleash Omega Spawn from the Image United crossover. What follows is a battle amongst everyone only the freak to eventually disclose his real identity. He is revealed to be Malibogia, 
The story goes back to the time when Al Simmons had defeated Malibogia, and post that, the Lords of Hell has cut off his power and set up certain roadblocks to make sure that he never came back. Of course, Malibogia felt betrayed, and he swore to regain his true form, power, and kill all those who were accountable for it. This included Violator, who post Malibogia's defeat, had shifted sides with Mammon, the greatest rival of Malibogia. Ordering Violator to tell everyone about his return, Malibogia teleports, leaving a rather skeptical and scared Violator alone in the wastelands of hell. A new rival of Spawn comes in the form of Blood, the Vampire Lord, and although it seems like he is trying to control Jim by holding back certain things about his past, but in reality, he has teamed up with Clown and the duo conspires to influence Jim and gear up for Malibogia's return. On the other hand, Jim's newfound status as a supreme healer has gained him all kinds of unsavory reputation, especially during his stint on a TV talk show where he cured a boy with extreme mental disorder in front of a live audience. He is often pursued by a throng of paparazzi and during one such incident, a photographer got hit by a bus. Sarah begs him to save the man's life, but he initially denies to. Shocked by his cold-hearted attitude, she berates him to an extent where he agrees to cure him. Due to the critical condition of the photographer, Jim had no other options but to demonstrate his powers right before flashing cameras to revive him. No wonder this particular incident gave him a whole new fame level. Unbeknownst to Jim, his miraculous live action was also observed by a trio of vampires called the Old Guard, who are later given the task of testing the new Hellspawn's powers by Clown. Jim is also strategically advised by Clown to use his powers to protect himself from the forces of heaven and hell. Meanwhile, during a secret conference with the old guard, Blood sends them to confront the new spawn and later asserts himself as the new leader. Clown agrees to follow Blood with the condition that Blood proves himself to be a dependent leader. The old guard finally confronts Spawn in the alleys. After demonstrating that Jim and his symbiote are a powerful threat, the trio of vampires shapeshift into monstrous beasts. They attack him, but Spawn seems rather unaffected by it. He ultimately sinks into the shadow and ends up slaughtering the trio. As for Detective Twitch, he arrives in the alleys looking for Al Simmons, but instead finds Jim, who is all the more bloodthirsty after dispatching the vampires. With Jim threatening Twitch, the latter holds him at gunpoint and commands him under arrest. As for the Pope, far across the globe in the Vatican City, he ends up getting an important phone call. Spawn 1997, a movie that every reviewer hates, but it's a trippy guilt pleasure. Al Simmons, a US Marine Force Reconnaissance Lieutenant Colonel and CIA operative, is given the task by his superior, Jason Wynn, to infiltrate a biochemical weapons plant in North Korea. But unknown to Simmons, Wynn has commanded Jessica Priest, his top assassin, to assassinate him while he is on the mission. Simmons is transported to hell where one of the demonic rulers of hell, Malibogia, makes with him a Faustian deal. Simmons will be able to return to the living world to see his fiancée, Wanda Blake, if he becomes his eternal servant and leader of Hell's army in Armageddon. Of course, Simmons accepts the deal and is transformed into a Hellspawn, the servant of Malibogia in a necroplasm suit, one that is not only a living, breathing creature, but also his only protection in the world. Simmons returns to Earth and tries to reunite with Wanda, not knowing that five years have passed since his death, and Wanda is now married to Simmons's best friend, Terry Fitzgerald. Post discovering that the devil had cheated on him, he seeks vengeance on his former boss and killer, Jason Wynn, who by the way has also has made a deal with the devil in secret to develop a deadly virus to take over the world and allow hell to attack heaven. Kill me! While it's true that Mark A. Z. DePay's 1997 superhero film based on Todd McFarlane's Spawn does not come under the category of a critically acclaimed flick, but there's no denying that it is a guilty pleasure for sure. For starters, some of the movie's playlist still airs on rock stations till date, and by that, we are specifically talking about Filter's hypnotic rock collab with The Crystal Method, titled can't you trip like I do? Full credits to the movie soundtrack that actually debuted at the seventh place on the US Billboard 200 and even managed to stay on the chart for a good 25 weeks. Next, 
comes the top level makeup effects given its time period. The physical transformation of actor Michael J. White as Spawn deserves a definite mention. Even John Leguizamo as the clown demon seemed absolutely incredible. Then comes the cape of Spawn. There's a particular scene where Spawn is seen crashing through the roof and gliding down to confront Jason Wynn, and the viewers get to see his magnificent cape overwhelming the entire room. That's unquestionably one of the highlights of the whole film. Last but not the least, hats off to Michael J. White for absolutely owning the role of Spawn. It's hard to find anyone else for that matter to match up to the same intensity and force that he brought along with him. Spawn Live Action Reboot What's happening? Well, according to reports, Greg Nicotero, the co-founder of the Oscar-winning K&B EFX group and also the special effects makeup artist behind The Walking Dead, is apparently getting down and dirty with the gritty Spawn reboot from creator Todd McFarlane. Described by the comic book creator as hard R-rated supernatural thriller, Nicotero has further stated that McFarlane is extremely passionate about the long gestating remake of the 1997 movie. Even actor Jamie Foxx, who signed the movie in 2018 to portray the lead character, has promised the film to be nothing less than incredible. Four years after Blumhouse confirmed McFarlane would write and direct a low-budgeted reboot of his Image Comics creation, Spawn has yet to claw free of development hell. Here's quoting what Blum mentioned in their interview with Comic Book. We are going to make it. Takes a while to get the script right. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.